I grew up in Severna Park, and I don't admit that very widely these days. <laughs> but uh, uh, so, but as a kid, I always wanted to come to the shore. And then when I went away to college, I, you know, really ended up uh, a forest ecologist. But I really, as I learned more about different career paths, I really came to know I wanted to do land conservation. So that's what led me to Maryland Environmental Trust and then Eastern Shore Land Conservancy for the last 30 years. Right after I got out of law school, uh, I was working for Maryland Environmental Trust and we, we were, I was running the Land Trust Assistance Program, which was trying to help local groups get land trusts started around the state. And we, first year of the program, we started 18 new land trusts, but we couldn't get anything going on the Eastern Shore. I was doing, you know, making phone calls to whoever and sending letters and finally Russ Brinsfield from the University of Maryland Y Research Center and Peter Brown who was with the University of Maryland School of Public Policy and his wife at the time was with Aspen Institute. Those two got together and answered my letter basically and called me over and those two started the Eastern Shore Land Conservancy and really pulled together a founding group. I was doing the support work, helping them with the staff work during that time, but they, they did the heavy lifting, went out, raised some money, and when they advertised for an executive director, I applied, and so sort of the right place at the right time. They were, like a lot of people, distressed at the time. This was in the late 80s where most of the development on the Eastern Shore, and frankly, north of 80% of new development on the Eastern Shore was happening on prime farms where you could get perks. You know, so stuff was just getting scattered around without any common sense design for the future of agriculture or towns or whatever. So they were like, we got to do something. After, you know, we got up and running in, in 1990 and basically, Board of Directors started giving us conservation easements. You know, there was a lot of pent up, so there's all this pent up angst out there. All of a sudden, here's a solution. You know, you can put your land in conservation easements. So we were like, I mean, we, we protect maybe 2,000 to 2,500 acres per year with our current staff. Back then, we were protecting 5,000 to 7,500 with one staff. It just, man, people really wanted to do it. But it was running fast and furious to get a lot of land protected. And so we got good at that right away. And there were all of this landowner uh, angst really manifested into, really probably put Eastern Shore Land Conservancy back then in the top five land trusts in the country. The board quickly wanted to grapple with how does this, all fit together, what's the bigger picture. And they came up with a vision statement for what they wanted the Eastern Shore to look like, the whole region, what do we want? We want the Eastern Shore to uh, look like in 2050. And they basically came up with three things. They said, we want our towns to be vibrant and well-defined. Uh, we want our rural enterprises, they called them farms, forests, and fisheries, to be thriving. We want people to be able to make a living off of this place. That's a really important part of the heritage of the Eastern Shore. And we want our rural landscapes to be protected. You know, this bucolic nature of the Eastern Shore was also important. So those three things they came up with in 92, and we really followed it ever since. I'm Joe Hickman. I'm, uh, me, my wife Marianne and I are owners of what we call Black Horse Flag Farm. I was born and raised here and uh, we bought it from the family about 20 years ago and since that time we we built our house here and, and have preserved it. I run a farm management business on the Upper Eastern Shore of Maryland and Delaware and work with a lot of landowners. Been a proud member of the 
Land Conservancy Board for a few years. I work with a variety of landowners from all over the country and the world and some that live here. I have retired farmers, churches, schools, uh, all sorts of charities, big investments, pleasure farms, hunting farms, uh, investment farms from people all over the world. When we bought the land from the family, we knew we wanted to protect it. We put it in the Maryland Ag Preservation Foundation MALF program. For us, it helped pay down the mortgage, and, but we knew this was going to be our home and where we'd raise our family. I, I heard about ESLC from one of my owners, but I helped with, at that time, was, uh, the stewardship was a it's important, obviously, always important, but it was a, a you know one-person shop. And I d started doing it. I got out the land and got to learn about it. And then a heartfelt thing, I had a farm I managed that the owners had to sell, and it was near a town, and um, I think it could have been handled a lot differently. And I realized, you know, if they had better, inf if I had provided better information or gave them a resource, maybe they would have thought differently how it was, it ended up being heavily developed. It could have been done differently. And I said, you know, I need to, learn more and, it, and, and the resource was there from Rob on down to the great staff over the years I've worked with. When I first started about 30 years ago in management, the, farm, every, the farmers were good and landowners cared, but mostly the farmers said this is how we operate and if money got short, owners said well maybe I'll sell a piece of property or things like that. It was a, the business was different. Now Owners say, I want my farm to do lots of things. I want it to generate some income, I hope. I want some enjoyment out of it if I hunt or, or like to bird watch or walk or fish. Uh, I want the habitat and the environment to be better. And that the preservation goes along with that. So a lot, right now I say landowners, I think you can have it all and the, the, the protection of that is important because Farming is a long, you know, it's a long, <laughs> slow business. Uh, knowledge is everything for people, is finding out how the pro, uh, how uh, uh, protection works, how can it benefit them, but also being a sound resource that people trust. Uh, you'll have a lot of opinions when you own property and, you know, other people want to buy it. It, it could be change in use, uh, the, the county use, the state mandates for zoning change and land use, all those things come into it, but you need someone to say, listen, let me wrap my hands about what I've got here and what, what can it do for me? And even if it's in an area that's subject to development, how is it done thoughtfully? How is it done to provide access for all our communities? You know, I'm a little biased in that I, they probably couldn't preserve enough farm land for me. And I know that's not always the right thing. Now with technology, being able to see the overlay maps and the planning and things like that allow people anywhere in the world, which I have clients all over that can say, oh, there, here's my, how does my farm fit into what you're thinking in a, a Kent or Queen Anne's or Talbot or Cecil County. Uh, so that, that's helpful. I mean, that being, being have those resources there and knowing someone that's, that has not no interest in anything but providing solid information. When I was a kid, I grew up in a house that my grandfather built back in 1919. It was, he had a little farm in Anne Arundel County, and I watched everything grow up around it. Maybe it was back then that I thought if I ever did have my own property, <laughs> that wasn't going to happen. <laughs> so, so I didn't really know when I, I bought the first piece of property here in 1972. I bought it for hunting. I didn't know what to really do with it. So I, I learned more and more, and, and I, I uh, actually put some slide presentations together about the farm, and that is how I met Rob Etkin. He started explaining about conservation easements, and that's the first I really got involved and in, in, uh, interested in learning about them. And, and I knew everyone is different, and I tell people that all the time. And, and the thing that I really wanted here was to make sure that we were still practicing our civil cultural uh, things here. I grew up you know, with a lot of respect for the land. And so when, when I became a part of this, it was so exciting to know that yeah. we share the same ideas about preserving so that the next folk will enjoy as well. Yeah, so I mean, we get the recreation opportunities we have here. You know, we're doing everything we, we want to do on this property and it's gonna be here for somebody else. With, with development, you get fragmentation. 
and, and a lot of wildlife species, they depend on these big blocks of, of forest land. And so um, anybody that's, that's interested in wildlife, it's, that should be right up their alley. We, our generation, owe it to the next generation to make sure that we leave yeah. this earth in the best condition that we can leave it for them. Well, I'm Johnny Ackridge III. Most people call me Chip. Um, we've been here on the Eastern Shore since 1981. Uh, so we're pushing 31, 39 years. Uh, I've known uh, Rob Ed Edgen for almost all those years that I've been here. And I'm a conservationist myself. I've, I've, we have several hundred acres here and I've taken uh, about 75% of that that was in ag, commercial ag production out of ag production and put it into conservation practices with the Conservation Reserve Program primarily. And we've been successful in reestablishing the wild bobwhite quail, which has uh, been a real delight. The, the idea of conservation is, is deep within me. I grew up uh, in the Great Smoky Mountains uh, area of Tennessee. I'm a, a Boy Scout, I'm an Eagle Scout. I believe in leaving nothing but footprints when you leave. Um, and that's, that's one of the things that we've done here. We've made a big commitment to conservation and that of course is what, one of the main stays of the Eastern Shore Land Conservancy's mission. The, conservation is a, is a broad, broad topic um, and covers basically the entire world. Um, and we got to pick our own little spot and see if we can make our own little difference. That's all. That's all we can do. Hi, my name is Pat Langenfelder. I live here in Kennedyville in Kent County. Uh, my family and I moved here in 1988 from Western Shore. Our area was being encroached by a lot of uh, home, homes being built. So we could see the handwriting on the wall and so we looked around for a while and then we chose to come here to Kent County. Well, we preserved our land because it, it was important to us to have a base of land for, for agriculture. In order to have a viable agriculture, you need a whole lot of land, not just for one farmer, but for the whole entire uh, industry in, in that county or that region. We thought it was important to preserve our farm. Also, our children are farmer, farming now here with us, and they are interested in con continuing on, and now their children have expressed an interest to farm, so we in order to keep that legacy going, they will be seventh generation Langenfelders for farming. And therefore, we thought it necessary to preserve the farmland and keep it from encroachment like we were experiencing where we came from. Well, I think uh, landowners would be wise to protect their land if they really truly love their land. And I don't mean to be critical of those who sell because we did sell where we were, obviously. But um, if, if they have the environment like we have here in Kent, and you, there's a lot of natural resources here, it's not only the land itself, but there's you know, the waterfronts and historic places and things like that. And so preserving that for the future for others to uh, either u utilize for farming or to enjoy, even if they can't enjoy it in person, but to see it as they drive by, uh, is, is important for others to, to consider putting their land in some type of an easement. I'm Wayne Gilchrist, um, work for Eastern Shore Land Conservancy in what we call the educational component, the Sassafras Environmental Education Center, where we uh, teach children from ages 5 to 18 about uh, nature's principles here in 1,200 acres of state land. I think it was my first year in Congress, probably 1991. Uh, I got a call from former Governor Harry Hughes uh, to meet a fine young man named Rod Etkin and a few other people that started the idea of, um, of purchasing easements on the eastern shore of Maryland. 
and it was an extraordinary idea and certainly ESLC has become immensely successful over the last few decades. Um, one of the reasons I went to Congress is because I didn't think people over there knew enough about nature's principles or conservation. The big issue in the early 90s was non-tidal wetlands. And once I hooked up with Rob, I figured, my, my figuring back way back then was that if you could purchase easements, stop development, have a farmer still own the land, that would be a great way to begin to understand uh, the value of non-tidal wetlands and of marshes and of uh, soil health and all those things. I just saw the precipitation of events occurring once you could preserve the land. We're standing on this area where I raised my children. My children uh, on the Turners Creek and the Sasquatch River learned how to fish and canoe and hike and swim and all that stuff right here. And the value uh, of nature and their love for nature. So when I got out of Congress, I said, well, this is a great place to teach children. So my first friend that I went to was Rob Etkin. And then John Griffin was the secretary of DNR and a couple other people. But Rob got together with John and they said, let's help this poor old political hack with the few decades he has left on the planet. So Rob uh, pulled in the Sasquatch Environmental Education Center into the umbrella of Eastern Shore Land Conservancy so that we could function as a nonprofit uh, and all that means with the public schools. When the kids come here, all of them, these kids five to 12, they're, they're like kids in the 40s and 50s. They're just, they love the outdoors. They wanna climb a tree, they wanna pick up a snake. They're gathering caterpillars. It's, it's just, a, it's a wonderful thing. They also have this innate sense, almost oddly enough, of confidence. And in their little minds, appreciation and respect for their friends that are out here. No bullying, no teasing, just laughter and fun. I think the future of ESLC is really bright. There's a lot of energy coming in, um, a lot of young energy, um, a lot of you know, different perspectives you know, from different fields of work and you know, types of expertise that come into play. Great people who really care about the Eastern Shore, who have the energy to really go to work for it. What I think all that's going to culminate to at some point is a greater emphasis on public access. We're really coming into a new generation of families and you know, people, citizens who are able to vote and just engage with the type of work that we do. We need to capture them and the best way to capture them is to get them on the land. A big part of that for us is just continuing to tell the story of the work that we've done in the past 30 years and how it's connected previous generations to it. And our previous generations felt that responsibility to steward the land much in the same way that the next generation coming up should do. Delmarva Oasis is ESOC's initiative to protect 50% of the Delmarva Peninsula by 2030. That's really going to require um, a lot of funding, a lot of partnerships, and just a lot more hard work just to get the land protected that we see as critical for the sustainability of the Delmarva Peninsula. We know that we have to continue protecting land, but obviously with the way that the world is going right now, the way that the environment is reacting to climate change and a lot of the other things that we're doing to it, uh, we really have to ramp up the efforts that we're um, taking to protect the world that we live within. The ESLC actually started back in 2008 the process of figuring out what it means to work with a whole community. Um, whole community meaning uh, beliefs, you know, ethnicities, class, you know, any type of thing that could describe people who aren't the typical ESLC supporter or constituent. It kicked off projects like the, the, the Packing House, the Eastern Shore Conservation Center and that redevelopment and just the overall Center for Towns work that we do. So there's definitely been some major wins, you know, I'll say major progress from what started back in 2008. You know, this place is amazing. And Eastern Shore Land Conservancy has worked so hard for 30 years to make sure that it essentially stays the same and looks the same as we all, you know, love it to be. But that doesn't mean that we can't continue to enhance it in a way that's, you know, resilient, strong, and aspirational. You see this tree right here? 24 hours a day, seven days a week, for as long as that tree is alive, 
the phenomenon of photosynthesis works. But that photosynthesis, that phenomenon that keeps life on the planet, works all the time for our benefit. And you know what ESLC does? Quietly, relentlessly, reliably pursues its goals all the time. And that's what makes it that phenomenal wonder that it is.